Hey, welcome back to Global Environment. Uh, on this segment, we're going to talk about simulation models. One in particular, a case study I did of a country in Africa where I used to work. And what we're going to do is connect this with some of the things we did earlier in the course. Earlier in the course, we built systems diagrams generally on paper, but you can take those uh, several steps further and actually build what you've modeled on paper in a computer. And the case study will clearly show that. Now, you know, why, why do you do that? You know, if we're, we're talking about science in general, uh, what, why is science so important? Why does the government spend so much money on science every year? One of the major reasons is that science is predictive. So if we understand uh, how something functioned in the past, we have a really good idea of what might happen with it in the future. And we're all concerned about the environment, so looking at past trends can help us, and we can really put that together in a model that can do better than our, our brain scan alone. So let's look at this. Now, the country, the case study we're going to look at is the country of Eritrea. And you can see it's located in eastern Africa. It used to be part of Ethiopia. And most people don't know about it because it's one of the newest countries in the world. It got its uh, independence after fighting a 30-year war with neighboring Ethiopia. The people are very proud but it's also very interesting because it's an environmental basket case. In the first, uh, you know, basically 15 years of independence, uh, they've only been able to feed themselves once. And I had the privilege of serving in the Peace Corps in this area, and it, it was here that I got very interested in the environment. Now, if you look at this uh, uh, graphic here, this is a digital elevation map of the country of Eritrea. And it's uh, put together using satellite data. And what you have is the light colors represent high elevation, the dark colors low elevation. And this is the Red Sea right here. So you can see the country is roughly divided into, into two areas, a highland region and a lowland region. The highland region has most of the population. They're subsistence farmers. They, they dwell here because you have seasonal rains. Uh, you also have some people living in the lowland regions. They're mostly herders. Now here's a shot from the highlands during the rainy season. It's a shot my wife took. And, you know, what do you see here? Uh, one thing is you see lots of kids wherever you look. Uh, they have a really high population growth rate. It's about 2.7% per year. That doesn't sound like a lot, but over the course of a century, that's huge population growth, and I'll show you that later. Uh, you also might notice that this country is very deforested. A hundred years ago, it was about 20% forested. Now it's less than 4% forested. Now where did all that wood go to? Some of it went into their traditional homes, these hudmos here. Another reason they had to use so much wood is they get 80% of their energy from biomass. So that really stresses the environment. And as you can imagine, uh, just like we saw in Easter Island, when you remove this biomass, you get high rates of erosion. And erosion is a major problem in this country. Now, if we're thinking about big environmental problems, it doesn't get much bigger than this. How are we going to keep these kids fed in the future with all these environmental problems? Uh, here's a younger, thinner me in the highlands during the dry season. And uh, this is an interesting picture because in this picture you can see lots of cactus growing. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Uh, this is actually an invasive uh, introduced species. It's growing all over Africa. Cactus is not indigenous to Africa. And it's changing the ecosystems. And we usually think of invasives as a problem you see in places like the U.S., but it's also impacting other areas of the globe as well. Uh, this is the lowland region, and this is always dry. This is about 10 steps out of my house. Uh, you can see some volcanoes in the background. Again, how do you make a sustainable society in a desert region like this? Uh, this is so bad that you often see goats climbing in trees to get enough vegetation. Sustainable area? It's hard to make one. Eritrea is increasingly urbanized. They've joined the fossil fuel age just as it peaked and might be closing. Uh, they have increasing uh, amounts of urbanization and the problems related to urbanization, you know, how do you take care of a family of five 
that lives behind this door. Uh, they have transportation problems, sewage problems, uh, major problems that we would see in the developed country, but generally 10 times as bad. So we're going to stop there. In the, in the next segment, we're going to see how you can apply uh, simulation modeling into looking at big environmental problems like this. So I'll see you next time on Global Environment.